Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Kometa Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is our series that is dedicated to showing you how to save money on the miniature wargaming hobby. And on today's episode, we're going to show you guys how to quickly and more importantly, cheaply paint up a pair of Outrider quads for House Orlock in your games of Necromunda Ash Wastes. So as you can see in this photo, this is what the end result will look like. We're going to give you guys a beautiful tabletop sander with your two uh, Orlock Outrider quads. And so long as you follow the techniques as well as shopping lists that we recommend for our cheapskate method, your grand total investment in this uh, two Outrider quads will end up being $36.11. Now, when you compare that with the shopping list that you need to purchase from both Ari Painter as well as Games Workshop, you're talking about a grand total of $229.80. And when you subtract our cheapskate method of $36.11 from that total, you end up with a grand total savings of $193.69. So with that being said, let's go ahead and show you guys how to cheaply paint up some Outrider quads for your games of Nicomunda Ash Wastes. Alright, so the very first thing you gotta do, of course, is to assemble your miniatures. I highly suggest that you actually put your miniatures into sub-assemblies. I highly suggest that you actually uh, out, uh, assemble the Outrunner quads first, as you can see in this photo on the right-hand side. At the same time, leave them separate from the bases, so that way you can get to the undercarriage area when you paint these up. Also, paint up the two gunners that will be going on the back of the outquire Outrunner quads, as you can see right there in the middle of the picture, fully assembled, and then finally assemble the drivers on the left hand side now I will warn you these drivers of course because they'll be separated from the vehicle you will have a hard time actually fitting them right back onto the quad so I suggest you trim the control panels that are looking on their feet the control pedals you've got to cut off the inner control pedal just a little bit so that way it slides smoothly right back into the outrider quad and these sub assemblies makes painting a lot easier for you so I highly suggest that you do that so once you create your sub assemblies next thing we do of course is to texture the base all right so when it comes to texture your bases i simply suggest to use a very easy method using sand as well as wood glue the first thing you should do of course is to draw the outlines of where your tires are going to go for your outrider quads and once you draw those outlines the next thing you do of course is cover your bases with a thin layer of elmer's wood glue which is absolutely free from my situation and then let it dust with some sand that you get from outside now once you let that dry the next thing you'll do of course is to seal that texturing i highly suggest you make a mixture of water as well as wood glue make it about a 50 50 mix so that way it's about the consistency of milk and then from there you just brush it directly on top of the dried texturing that is on your bases as this stuff dries will create an airtight seal for your texturing to make sure that it doesn't flake off your bases now of course you could skip this step by purchasing astro granite by games workshop but that's going to cost you seven dollars eighty cents in order to do that whereas my method is absolutely free so once you're done texturing the bases next thing to do of course now is to start working on the priming all right, so when it comes to the priming of your miniatures, I suggest you use two different colors. For the Outrider quads themselves, I suggest that you use Rustolium Flat Black Primer. I get this stuff from my local one for $3.99. And use Rustolium Flat White Primer for the crew members, and that also costs $3.99. Now, the reason why I recommend you do that is because what ends up happening is that you're going to use that darker color tone for your quads by doing a lot of dry brushing with metallic paints so that we can paint those quads up even faster so by having a dark undercoat that's really going to help me out in order to see to achieve that effect whereas the crew members we're going to use those guys with white primer but the reason why is because their color schemes could be a little bit more vibrant and so because i want that white undercoat in order to help us out and plus we do our oil washing so we're really going to mute down those colors so that's the reason why we did that white undercoat now, of course, the reason why you do priming is for two reasons. The first reason why you do so is so that way your acrylic paint has a rough surface to adhere to on a microscopic level as you paint onto your miniatures. If you put paint directly onto bare plastic, it will not be enough surface tension for the acrylic paint to adhere to. So if you give it the slightest bit of friction, you're gonna rough the paint 
at the same time of your overall finish. Meanwhile, by putting on this uh, Rust-Oleum flat primer, it does give that uh, texture for the paint to adhere to, and at the same time also has a huge impact on the vibrancy of your colors. Traditionally speaking, the darker the color scheme you want, you want to go with the darker primer, and the brighter the color scheme, you go with the white primer. Now, once you're done with those primings, next thing you do now, of course, start working on the base coats. All right, so the first thing I do, of course, is a quick dry brush all over the chassis of the Outrider quads, and I just do a really heavy dry brush with Gunmetal Gray by Folk Art. As you can see, it's a nice, beautiful, dark, metallic gun gray, and I just put a dry brushing all over the entire vehicle. I do a dry brushing on the hubcaps of the tires, as well as the entire fuselage, as well as chassis of the Outrider quad, covering all a single inch I can of it with this Gunmetal Gray. And this dry brushing does a couple of things. First of all, it gives the impression that these Outrider quads have been weathered because some of the black undercoat will show through, which represents the fact that these colors and the metallics and the vibrancy of the metallics have faded and chipped over time. So once you're done with that first dry brush, next thing you do now is do a highlighting dry brush. So the next dry brush we're going to use real quick is Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. It's a nice bright metallic silver and you're going to do this exactly all over the fuselage as well as the chassis of the vehicle. Now what this is going to do is going to bring out those highlights by catching upon the very surface of your miniature while leaving that darker gunmetal gray and black in the recess in the miniature as well, making it look even more weathered and beaten up over time. Which is absolutely perfect to see that your vehicles have been driving through the ash waste and the ash waste I imagine will be are absolutely horrific to your vehicles. So now that we're done dry busting the body of your vehicles, next we do now is a focus on the tires of the Outrider Quad. In this case, we're doing another dry brush, this time using Anita's Acrylic Gray. Just doing a quick dry brush all over the tires of, for both the back tires as well as the front tires of the Outrider Quads. Once again, this is going to leave that darker black color in the recess of the miniature while catching the raised surfaces and creating artificial depth using dry brushing techniques. Uh, with this gray color so that way it looks like we have some depth going on we have some shadows as well as recesses as well as some highlights and once again we're gonna do one more dry brushing on the tires one more time with pale gray by folk art you can get this stuff at your local walmart for about 75 cents and once again we're just doing a quick once over with the dry brushing on the tires as you can see we're leaving those darker grays and blacks in the recess of the miniature while that brighter gray is catching upon the raised surfaces creating highlights as well as depth in our miniature now once we're done with our dry brushing the next thing you do now of course is start working on the body of the vehicle so for this example, I am painting up the body uh, of my of my Outrider quads with Mermaid Blue by Delta Serum Coat. It costs 65 cents at my local Hobby Lobby. And the reason why I'm using this color is because I, I like to give it overall blue color scheme with my Orlock gangs. And I like to use different shades of blue, teal, and turquoise in order to do that effect. So because of that, this Mermaid Blue is a nice vibrant blue, it also contrasts very nicely with the dark metallics of the uh, body as well. And plus when we add some oil wash to it, it's going to give us like a dirty cyan color, which is going to look really nice as well and very fitting for the ash waste. So I just put two thin coats of mermaid blue for Delta Serum Coat and we're ready to move on to our next detail. So the next detail we're working on are all the leather goods that are on this vehicle. There's actually quite a bit of leather on here. First of all, we have the seat that the rider rides upon, as well as the uh, harnesses of bags, as well as uh, uh, holster that we have crunched in the front handlebars of the quad. We also have belts and stuff holding down, tying down gear. And to paint those elements, we're going to use two thin goats of burnt umber by Apple Paint. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. All we're going to do is do a real simple base coat with this color and putting two thin layers and getting a good base to work off for our dry brushes. So for the leather goods, next thing we do, of course, is do a quick dry brush with Territorial Beige. You can find this by uh, Apple Barrel Paint to local Walmart for about 50 cents. Just do a quick dry brushing on all the brown leather goods that we did earlier in Burnt Umber in order to create that highlighting effect on the umber as well. And then, of course, we're going to do one more dry brushing. We're using Khaki by Apple Barrel Paint. Also costs 50 cents to local Walmart. We do another quick dry brush of the Khaki paint over the Territorial Beige to add that extra degree of brightness so that way it's not too muted in the rest of the dark metallics of the vehicle. 
Now from there, the next detail we're going to focus on is the bolt pistols located in the holster in the front of the handlebars of the Outrider quads. For my gang, I use a holly branch for the weapon casings for all the weapons in my gang. It's a nice bright Christmas green. I just put two thin layers upon the grip of the bolt pistols as well as the exposed body that's exposed beyond the heart out by on the uh, holster. And once you put those two thin coats of holly branch, the next thing you do of course is a dry brush. And the dry brush color I use for this portion is once again Lime Sherbert by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice kind of neon green kind of look and it looks really nice, especially when you dry brush it directly onto holly green. Just do a real quick dry brush real fast that we catch up on the raised surfaces of the weapon, causing some three-dimensionality as well as some depth. And once we're done with that, the last thing we do now is work on the finer details using metallic colors. All right, so going back to the metallic colors on the uh, Outrider Quad, I use Antique Brass by Anita's Metallic. It costs you about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And what I do is I put two thin coats on this on the control elements of the vehicle. So for example, some of the tools are hanging off of the rigging on the vehicles on the back rear hubcaps. I just paint those out two thin layers of Antique Brass. At the same time, same with the connection point from the arms of the actual front wheels and back wheels of the quads, I picked those out two thin layers of antique bronze as well, as well as for the gas tank that sits right behind the handlebars and the main fuselage as well. And then of course, the last thing I do, of course, I also paint the grips of the handlebars, as well as the braking, as well as clutch mechanisms as well for the uh, for the uh, transmission, and just pick those out two thin layers of that antique bronze color. And the next color we go with next, of course, is Emperor's Gold by Delta, uh, by uh, DecoArt. And what I use this for is for all the buckles that are located all over all of the metal goods. So things like the buckles on the holsters, for example, on the blasting charge handle, on the leather satchels in the back of the vehicles. Anything that has a buckle for the leather goods, I just put that on two thin layers of Emperor's Gold in order to add that detail to these miniatures. And one of the last design elements I add to these Outrider quads is to add a little bit more color to it as I use Folk Arts Copper, which runs about 75 cents to a local Walmart. And what I do is I pick out two details. I pick out the skull uh, headlights that are located there on the uh, right next to the handlebars in the front of the Outrider quads, as well as the shock absorbers in the back, as well as front tires. Now, I had a commenter once put down in one of my comments from my previews. They thought it was a really cool idea. I put the skulls there for the headlights. Now, you might be wondering why skulls instead of the actual headlights. The reason why is because when I was actually assembling these miniatures, uh, the headlight part that goes right in the center that I was clipping for one of my outrider crafts, it actually fell into my carpet uh, while I was assembling it and I could not find it for the life of me. I spent like a good 15-20 minutes trying to find that really small headlight piece and I could not find it. So because that was going to look kind of walking having one of my outrider quads having headlight in the front while the other one wouldn't. So I was kind of figuring out, trying to figure out what I was going to do, but luckily for me though, I did have some leftover Citadel skulls that I had for my conversion that I did for the Vanstar gang in the studio. So because I decided to replace the headlights with skulls and make the skulls look like the eyes glow to make it look like the headlights. So it's a kind of nice little neat conversion. It makes these vehicles look kind of unique because you have skulls on them. At the same time, they also double up as headlights as well. And I just put those on two thin layers layers of copper in order to achieve that effect. So now that we have all the different shades of metallics on the miniature, the next thing we do now, of course, is another dry brush. This time I'm using Anniversary Silver once again by Folk Art. I use this for all the brass, copper, as well as gold elements on these vehicles as well to give it kind of like a shimmering, slightly weathered look as well to make it look like these things have been exposed by the weather as well as the sun of the ashways. And as you can see, for as much as these vehicles are kind of dark, there's a lot of color variety going on in these Outrider Quads. And for those of you who watched me before, my cheap shots know I love bright bold colors for my paint jobs and so far I'm really liking the effect that I'm seeing here. And the last detail that we put on these vehicles of course is put a single dot of lime sherbet into the eye sockets of the crimson of the uh, copper colored skulls so that way it looks like these skulls are actually headlights and they're actually lighting up the darkness as well. As we see here we also have added some detail on the bases but we'll talk about exactly how we worked on those bases here later on in the video. 
So now that we're done pretty much with the vehicles, next thing you do now is to focus on the crew. And I decided to go with two different skin tones for the crew members of the uh, Outrider quads. I decided to do half the gang in Burnt Umber, taking a darker uh, skin tone by Folk Art, uh, by, sorry, by Apple Barrel Paint. And I did the other half with uh, Flesh Color from Apple Barrel Paint as well. The Flesh Color, you can get your local Walmart for about 50 cents. Just put two thin layers of both the Dark Umber on those with the darker skin tone and Flesh for those with the lighter skin tone. And once that is dry, you're ready to move on to a dry brush. So for the dry brush, those fighters who have the lighter skin tone, I use Delta Serum Coats Peaches and Cream, which you can get your local Hobby Lobby for 65 cents. And I use Territorial Beige for those that have the darker skin tone. Just do a real simple uh, brush dry brush on the exposed flesh on these miniatures to create that three dimensional look and the illusion of depth. And then from there, we're ready to move on to the hair. All right, so let's talk about the hair real quick. So as you guys know, my Orlock gang, the uh, jury has some pretty neon, different neon colored hairdos, just because I like vi bright, vibrant colors for my gangs. And yes, I know they're Orlock, and yes, they're supposed to be grim and dark and ferocious, but I like adding those neon colors for the hair just because it just kind of tickles me, I guess, that way. I think they look kind of cool. So as you can see, I got four different colors that I use. I use Delta Serum Coats Mermaid Blue for the beard of one of the drivers. I use Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint for the uh, undercut haircut for one of the other gunners. I use Diva Pink for the guy using the harpoon gun because I just thought it looked cool. And then I also use Chris Green Apple for the spiked up hair for the other driver as well. I put two thin layers of these colors upon the hair. And once I was done with that, I was ready to move on to their uniforms. All right, so let's talk about the uniforms real quick. So for the shirts that they wear underneath their vests, I picked out two thin layers of Skyline by Folkart. It's a beautiful grayish blue color that you can get for about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And I just put down two thin layers for all the undershirts and sleeves for the both the drivers as well as for the gunners as well. So that way it matches with my Orlock gang uh, for the guys who are not mounted on vehicles. Now I did want to make these guys look just a little bit different than their mounted via than their uh, regular normal Orlock looking guys. Guys, so because I paint their trousers a different color. Traditionally, I like to play my Orlock gang with blues and grays. Uh, blues for the shirts and then grays for the jackets, uh, for the pants, I mean. But this time around, I decided to use Burnt Umber by Folk Art. It's a nice contrasting color to the skyline. It looks really, really nice. Put two thin layers of this all over their uh, trousers. And once we're done with that part, next we can move on is a dry brush. All right, so we use two colors for our dry brushes. For all the parts that we did in Skyline, we're gonna dry brush that with Anita's acrylic slate blue, which is a nice pale grayish blue color. Just put two, th uh, just put a real thin layer of dry brushing all over the shirts to crash those raised surfaces, so that way you can see those creases nice and clean. And then after that, I did exactly the same thing with the dry brushing on the pants of these fighters using territorial beige for, uh, that we used earlier. And just a real quick dry brush of that territorial beige over the burnt sienna in order to create that texture as well as that depth. Now that we're done with that, the next thing to do, of course, is to paint on the blue. Now, I did forget to take a picture of this step, so I do apologize for that. But just to let you guys know, I used light blue by Apple Burrow Paint in order to paint up the sleeveless vest that these guys are wearing, so that way they match the rest of my gang, the jury. So I just put two thin layers of that light blue, and then from there, the next thing I do, of course, I pick out some of the red elements. So these guys are all wearing masks and respirators, except for the guy with the blue beard. So for those respirators and masks, I paint those up in two thin layers of True Red by Anita's acrylic you can get this stuff at your local hobby lobby for about 65 cents so i painted the face masks as well as the arm wraps of the gunners and when any other elements i want to pick out in red and once that is done we move on to our next step and that next step is on the boots that these fighters are wearing. So these fighters are actually wearing some pretty cool looking boots. They have boots with these flaps that go over the top of them with buckles running down the outside edge of the boots. So for the boots themselves, I picked them out of two thin layers of pavement by Apple Burrow Paint to create these black looking boots as well as their gloves. And then for that flap that goes over the laces of their boots, I used two thin coats of territorial beige to kind of create this interesting kind of two-tone look for the boots that these characters are wearing. And after I was done with that, just a quick dry brush real quick with Pale Grey by Folk Art over both the Territorial Beige as well as the pavement that I use for all the little goods on these fighters. Just to create some illusion of depth as well as to create some additional highlights on these uh, portions that these fighters are wearing. And once I was done with that, the next thing we need to work on of course is on the weapons. 
So for the driver, the bolt pistol, as well as the heavy bolter, as well as the heavy harpoon launcher, I picked out the body casings for these weapons in two thin coats of holly branch, which is a nice bright Christmas green color, cost 50 cents at your local Walmart. And the reason why I use this holly branch green is because it contrasts nicely with the blues as well as grays and and uh, Bird Santa of these fighters as well, as well as the red design elements we also have. Another reason why I chose this holly branch is because that's exactly the same color I used for the weapons for casings for my uh, infantry dismounted uh, or like members of the gang as well to create that kind of commonality between all of them. And once you're done putting those two thin layers of holly branch, the next thing you do of course now is a dry brush. And once again, we dry brush these green weapon cases with lime sherbet to create some variety as well as some uh, depth in our miniatures. As you see, that lime sherbet does a beautiful job of capturing various services while leaving that holly branch in the deeper recesses of the guns as well. And once you're done doing that really quick dry brushing with the lime sherbet, you're ready to move on to the metallics for these riders. All right, so the fighters, the first thing of course I focus on are on the control pedals that these drivers are actually operating. And since I use uh, aged copper for all of the uh, control surfaces of the vehicles, I decided to create those up for the pedals as well. Just put two thin layers of this uh, aged copper all over the control pedals that these guys are standing upon. And once that is perfectly dry, move on to the gunners now. Now as for the gunners, the gunners actually ride these kind of weird like swivel seats that go on the back of the framing of the quads. The problem that I ran into though is that the primer I used for the quads was black and I used white for the uh, gunners that were that I primed for those guys. So to help solve this problem what I did is I took gunmetal gray and I mixed equal parts of black paint with it to make a 50-50 mix. What this did, it created a darker gunmetal gray color that actually was pretty spot on to what the color of gray was on the uh, framing of the quads that I had primed in black. So what I decided to do is to focus on things like the swivel chairs as well as the frame of the swivel chairs, the control operating part where their feet rest upon, as well as the framing and the, uh, and the, uh, the pencil mounts for the heavy weapons as well. I put two thin layers of this darkened gunmetal gray and then from there we on to rest our metallic elements so the next step i worked on for all these guys for both the gunners as well as the crew members is i used copper elements where to pick up the skulls that make up the belt buckles for this gang as well i use this kind of same copper uh, copper motif with the skulls the belt of the uh, infantry fighters in my gang at the same time it also draws a nice parallel to the copper skulls that make up the headlights on these vehicles as well just put two thin layers and ready to move on so the next color we decided to work on next is for all the armor as well as for all the guns. So all the metallic elements are done in silver. We picked down two thin layers of gun metal gray by folk art. So we did this for all the weapons, the barrels, the magazines. We also did this for the armor panels around the jackets as well as the shoulder pads for the gunners and the drivers. At the same time, we also used metallic element as well in order to pick out the uh, armor panels on the shins of the gunners as well. And once we put those two thin layers down for the gun metal gray, the next thing we move on are some more gold elements. So the next color we use is Deco Arts Emperor's Gold. Uh, it costs about 65 cents at a local Walmart, and we put the gold elements on two places. We put it on the goggles of the drivers in order to contrast nicely with the red color we use for the straps, as well as for the respirators that these drivers are using. At the same time, we also use two thin layers of this gold to pick out the knee pads of the uh, gunners as well to make a little bit of contrast between the silver as well as the gold on their armors of their shin guards. And once we're done with that, the next thing we do now, of course, is to pick out the lenses of the goggles. So the color we used to pick out the lenses on the on the faces were basically two thin dots of lime sherbet by Apple Burrow paint. It draws a nice little parallel between the skulls that are mounted on the headlights of the vehicles. At the same time, also matches the rest of the game that I picked up earlier that are not mounted on vehicles. I uh, just thought it kind of gave this kind of glowing green effect going on with the goggles. I thought it contrasted really nice with the gold as well as the blue elements of these gangers. 
So now that we're done with the drivers as well as the quads, the next thing we need now is start working on the bases. So on the texture base that we painted earlier, we put two thin layers of pavement paint by Apple Burl paint all over the top surface of the texture that we've done in sand as well as wood glue. Pavement is actually a very, very, very dark gray, almost to the point of black, but it's also got kind of a gritty texture to it as well. It's one of my absolute favorite paints used by Apple Barrel. And the reason why that is the case is because when you start dry brushing it, the graininess of this paint will help to catch the those details and it's gonna make it look really awesome at the same time. So the next video of course is do a quick dry brush of pewter gray by Apple Barrel Paints. Do one quick once over real fast with a dry brush all over the pavement in order to create that mid-tone kind of look. As you can see we're starting to bring out some of the texturing that we see earlier with creating some highlights at the same time also leaving that pavement in the recesses of the miniature. And then once again, we do another quick dry brush real quick using Drizzle Gray by Delta Serum Coat. We just do a quick once over with the dry brushing all over the gray dry brush that we did earlier to add an additional layer highlight. And as you can see, we have a lot of highlight going on now on these bases with the pavement in the recesses as well as some of the darker gray earlier with the lighter gray making them look like the sun scorched surface of the ash wastes. And the last design that we actually put on these on these bases is uh, some white checkering, some white lines from like a highway or a road. Uh, we do that in white paint by Apple Barrel Paint, costs 50 cents for a two ounce tube. Now you might be wondering, Commander Chiefscape, why did you put a line like that for a highway down the center of these bases? And the reason why is because one of my favorite films of all time are the Mad Max films by George Miller. And particularly one of my favorite ones was the Road Warrior Mad Max 2, which was the sequel to the original Mad Max. Anyways, the reason why I bring this up is because in that film, the narrator of the film actually starts talking about how the world eventually fell apart, which brought us to the Mad Max universe. And the guy actually has this beautiful line that he says. He says it was all out war on the highways and the highways became a white lined nightmare. That's what he actually called it. And I just always thought that that line from that movie was so resonant. It just kind of resonated with me ever since I ever heard that line. You know, a white line nightmare. Just really, really cool. And I just like the imagery that that evokes with, you know, combat taking place on the open road. So that's the reason why I put the little white lines down the middle of the bases. So that way I could have my own white line nightmare, I suppose, with my quads. And that was just a nice little added detail that I actually put on there. Now, once you are done, of course, with all the detritors, as well as the gunners, as well as the quads, next thing you do, of course, is to glue it all together and assemble it. So we glued the quads down onto the bases, followed by the drivers, then finally we also glue on the gunners on the back of the fuselages. Now, once you guys are done with that, next step, of course, is to do an oil wash, and uh, we use mid-wax poly-shaded acrylics using uh, Mission Oak Color. Now, of course, you could use um, Army Painter Strong Tone, which is a wonderful product as exactly as advertised, but our paint a strong cone tone costs $32 a can while Midwax Poly Shade Mission Oak only costs $6.99 per can. So that's exactly what we did here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically use it like a wash and put it all over the entirety of your miniature. The oil wash does a couple of things. The first thing that it does, of course, is that it seeps into the details, into the recesses of the miniatures, bring a lot of those details we did not see with the base coating as well as with the dry brush that we saw earlier. As you can see in this photo, a lot of details, like the folds and the cloth, the creases of the armor, etc., just really pops and looks really, really good. The second thing that the oil wash does, of course, is it also smooths out the transitions between your dry brushing as well as your base coating. So that chalky pastel look that we had earlier going on from all the dry brushing, that gets smoothed out. We see that nice gradual transition and gradient form from the base coat to the dry brush. And the very last thing that it also does is that it also darkens down the value of the brightness of your miniatures. So instead of having those really bright, vibrant colors that we had earlier, it's been very much muted down by the strong to, uh, by the uh, uh, Midwax Poly Acrylic and does a really good job of making that happen. And at the same time, we not only do we paint the drivers, the gunners, as well as the quads, we also paint the surface of the uh, road as well. So that way you can see all those nice details, creates like this brown stained up dirty look going on on the highway. Now, once you're done with this oil wash, the next thing you do, of course, is let it dry and cure for 24 hours. And the reason why is because the polyacrylic does have polyurethane mixed with it. So because of that, it will create a airtight seal 
seal and protect your miniatures as well but it takes 24 hours to dry now you, of course you could paint your miniature before then and handle it but just be aware it does feel kind of tacky on the miniatures from the uh from the poly acrylic as it's drying so if you're not careful you could rub off uh, some detail in your miniature when you're finished so just be careful before you actually dry my suggestion to you is actually use this as the very last step of your miniatures for painting for one evening and then leave it and then come back to the very next day and pick off exactly where you left off all right, so the next thing, of course, is a matte varnish. This is completely optional, but I do like a matte finish for my miniatures. So all I do is I just spray it real quick with some matte varnish real fast to mute down the sheen of the miniatures. And then once we're done with that, we rim the bases in two thin coats of Star, uh, Skyline by Folk Art. It's the same grayish blue color that I use for all the rims of the miniatures that we use in our studio's Necromunda collection. And once you're done with that, we're finally completed with our Outrider quads. And once again, this is the end result that we looked at earlier. As you can see, by following the techniques as well as using the materials that we supply, uh, suggest you use, you can have a really beautiful tabletop standard with your guys' Outrider quads, at the same time saving you buckets of money in terms of paint uh, at the same time, which is absolutely fantastic. So now that we've shown you exactly what our cheapskate method is for painting up these vehicles, let's go ahead and take on the shopping list that you'll need a symbol for both Games Workshop and Arm Painter to paint your gang the same same way we did except using those materials all right so for the Citadel method you need to buy a can of Corax white spray as well as Corax black spray to do the pining and those cost you $17 a piece from there you'll need to use a couple of colors actually you can use Emperor's Children white scar Teclas blue Caliban green Cyberite green and those are all gonna cost you four dollars and fifty five cents for those and those are for the white elements the bright blue elements the holly branch elements as well as the lime strip elements that we use in our painting after that you'll need to buy a pot of wildwood which costs you seven dollars eighty cents for your burnt umber effects as well as Canadian flesh tone for four fifty five for the parts we did in flesh afterwards you'll need to buy Murgas bone Rylor brown Hellion green Moot green Eschen green gray flayed one flesh all those are gonna cost you four dollars fifty five cents and that is for the khaki as well as territorial beige Chris apple kiwi and pavement effects that we actually put on our miniatures as well as the peaches of cream effect as well now from there you need to buy a pot of talisar blue which cost you seven dollars eighty cents or to paint up the uh, the bright blue body of the uh, Outrider quads. And then from there you need to buy Fenrisian Gray in order to do the bases as well as the shirts for your fighters. As well as Mephiston Red for all of the uh, metal uh, red elements on your miniatures as well. And that costs you $4.55 for those colors. Now for those effects you did in gray, you'll need to buy Eschen Gray, a Slash Gray, which will do $4.55 for that pot. And for your metallics, you'll need Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, Crimson uh, Screaming Bell, as well as Iron Breaker for all of your metallic elements. And those cost you $7.80 for those color. Now for your uh, dry brush that you need to do for your lighter brown color, uh, for your lighter gray colors, you need to buy Rust Gray, which costs you $4.55. For the trousers, you'll need Doom Bull Ground, which costs you $4.55. For the dry brush that we did in Pale Gray, you need to buy a Pult of Ultimon Gray for $4.55. And for all the gold elements on the miniature, you need to buy some Retributor Armor, which is just $7.80 for that. Now, once you're done dry brushing and base coating all of your miniatures using these materials, the next thing you do, of course, is to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which will just $32 on top of that. Once you let the oil wash dry, you'll need to spray it down with some Munitorium Varnish for that matte varnish. That's going to be costing $19.50. And of course, if you wanted to base your miniatures, you'll need to buy a pot of Astro Granite, which will just $7.80 as well. Now, assuming you purchase all these materials from Citadel as well as Army Painter for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $229.80 in order to paint up your miniatures using those name brand materials the same way we did using our cheapskate method our cheapskate method only costs 60 to 36 dollars and 11 cents and when you subtract that from 229 dollars 80 cents and of the grand total savings of 193 dollars and 69 dollars saved so there you guys have it that's exactly how you guys can quickly and more importantly cheaply paint up a series of outrider quads for your orlock gangs and nickerman ash waste as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe you guys input is valuable to us as always 
Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do for this week, guys. I'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.